It's a possibility. Probably more justices than any president has ever picked in one term. So the truth is, I tell people, you don't like me, but you have no choice. You have to go for me. I'm sorry. And they'll say, we don't like you, but we have to go for you. But most people like me, which is right. The other reason, the Supreme Court, remember this. November 8th, you got to get out there, Supreme Court judges. And, yeah. and you know, it's interesting, I have a great group of people headed up by Karen. Where's Karen? She's great. Where's Karen? She's amazing. Look at her, she's a star. You know? And by the way, I endorsed Marco Rubio, he endorsed me. He's doing well. Go for Marco. very tough battle for him. and tremendous amounts of money was spent on me. Tremendous. The commercials. It was very depressing. You turn on the television. I want to watch Ivory Snow. I want to watch, I want to watch like a cereal, something, Kellogg, something, anything. All it was was negative hit, negative hit. And I told my people, there's no way we can win Florida. There's no way. And negative. And those commercials were so false, just like Hillary's commercials. They're so false. They're so false. Like she's got the one with blood coming out of her eyes. And I meant her nose, or her ears, or her mouth. But these people are perverted, and they think it was another one. Unbelievable. And you know the truth? I cut it short because I was talking about either taxes or economic development. So I said, or well, whatever. And I wanted to get back on the subject. I should have finished it out. I would have been much better. So they lied. Then they put a reporter on. And nobody's better to people with disabilities than me. I spent millions and millions of dollars on buildings taking care of people. Anyway. But we had a story. We had a story where I was talking about people dancing in the streets or dancing on the rooftops here. Now, in all fairness, throughout the world, they were dancing. But I said, in New Jersey, they were dancing. And now I said, when the World Trade Center came. Nice. Real nice. So here's the story. By the way, those people that knocked down the World Trade Center, most likely, under the Trump policy, wouldn't have been here to knock down the World Trade Center. <laughs> So, so you know what the word grovel is, right? When you're groveling. In other words, you're trying to tell something, you're trying to make something up, you're groveling. So, you have the story with the blood, now I tell you about the grovel. So I had a reporter wrote a good story for making my case. Because it was a long time ago, it was like 15, 16 years from the time we started this narrative. So it was a long time ago. And it was during the World Trade Center, right after the World Trade Center, this reporter wrote a story talking about people dancing in the streets or on rooftops or something. It was pretty good. So we used it. And then the reporter, after I'm sure he was given tremendous pressure, he worked for, I believe, the Washington Post, and he worked for the New York Times. And New York Times. <laughs> Terrible. Totally dishonest. That's okay. But the reporter, all of a sudden, remembered it totally different from his story. And he was groveling. I won't make the motions because if I do, they'll say something. You know. <laughs> but, the, but I really spread this word. So he was groveling and trying to change his story. And going, you know, well, uh, maybe not. And so I'm not doing this. I'm not doing it. But, but just listen to this. So I didn't know the reporter. But then it came out that the reporter said he knew me. He met me. He met me in 1988. He met me. And I knew who he was. I didn't know who he was. I didn't. And if I did, and he was handicapped, he had a problem with something, and he was handicapped. Must be a nice guy. Didn't speak to him, but must be a nice guy. But he said, Trump knows who I am. I interviewed him twice or something when he was in the newspaper. You know how many reporters, you know how many of these people I meet on a daily basis? Okay? So here we are, many, many years before this happened, and then before the World Trade Center, and then many years, even before that, because you're talking about many years when the story was written, and then you go back another 15, 16 years. 
So he said, I knew him. And I knew that he was, look, I knew exactly what he looked like, okay? Now here's the story, folks. I didn't know him. And if I did know him, nobody, remember what I said, people with disabilities. I spent millions of dollars on ramps, on all sorts of things that go. In some cases, many cases, things I don't have to do. But I am a tremendous fan. So they put up this phony air, Hillary Clinton, and they show him. The word was groveling, and what I was talking about was groveling. So those are two of the things. Then they do another ad. When I went to Scotland, I wanted to see what kind of a job my boy did, Eric, because he rebuilt Turnbull. Eric! And I said, because there was a lot of press, I said, by the way, I was the one that predicted independence. I said, independence is going to happen. Everybody said, that's not going to happen. And you know why I said it was going to happen? Because in the UK, they were tired of having people pour into their country, pour into Scotland, and pour into these different places. They were tired of it, and they didn't want to be told. And the polls said 20 or 25 percent. Not even the polls. I guess it was the, the gambling, whatever, in Las Vegas. They said a certain percentage, very low. I said, no, it's going to happen. So I had a better feel. Now, when it happened, nobody gave me credit. These are minor details. I got no credit. Give me credit. So, so, so when I went to Scotland, now here's another phony here. Here's another phony here. So I went to Scotland, and I cut the ribbon, and I inspected my son's work. And then I got on a plane, and very quickly, we came, I came back. And I said, I don't want to touch a golf club, unlike our president, who plays more golf than people on the PGA Tour. Flies to Hawaii in a 747 spewing, and then he comes back and he talks about the carbon footprint that's being done. So when I went to Scotland, I wanted to see if my boys work. He's proud of it. He worked hard. He spent a lot of time there. Turnberg. So I went there, I inspected, I did this. Essentially, it was, I was there for a day. Bless. I came right back. And I said, I don't want to hold a golf club. I do not want a picture of me holding a golf club. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I don't want that picture. So they say, Mr. Trump, would you like to hit the first ball? No, keep the club away from me. <laughs> keep it away.